for sure. All right, so joining us, we have Buster Schur. Um, he runs Card Nation, Hoops Nation, and um, you got anything to, I guess, give the viewers? I wanted to kind of start off by, um, I guess if you could give my viewers a little backstory about your experiences in the card market, um, like how you got into collecting cards, when you started investing in cards, and whatever else you'd like to share. Yeah, totally. No, first thing first, I appreciate you having me. Um, and then second, I got into the card game, it must have been 2014. I was going to shows, buying, wow. you know, early Prism. Yeah. Oh, a lot of Giannis's yeah. that I regret selling way too early. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I was mostly just collecting for the sake of collecting. Like in the back of my head, yeah, I was trying to make money, but I never did. Mm -hmm. I was just buying cheap and holding it and, because I enjoyed it. And I would trade sometimes uh, because that's what the hobby was before you yeah. know, people were really selling and making any money on it. People were trading because they just wanted cooler cards for themselves. So that's what I was doing. I took a, I took a break. Um, probably three or four years in that span is, is when I really built Hoops Nation. But um, then last summer, I started getting back into it. And nothing had changed. Mm -hmm. The only thing that had changed was that people were making money now. Yeah. That is the, all, the, oh, yeah. all the products are the same. All the cards are the same. Most of the values are the same, except, you know, mm -hmm. obviously newer players are newer players. They didn't exist back then. Yeah. They were in middle school. Um, like I was. And... You know, so I got back into it with that first guy I really looked at was Trey. And so I started buying Trey. Um, and then I started diving in my collection that had just been in a closet, you know, yeah. at my parents' house where I'm, where I'm at now because of Corona um, in Connecticut. I, I found a couple of my honest rookie yeah. prisms. Mm -hmm. Woo. So that was, that was great. Um, yeah. But at, at the time too, they were only like $200. This is September. Yes. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I picked after that, I really just picked out a few guys that I liked five or six rookies mm -hmm. um, or second year guys went pretty hard on eBay on them. Um, bought a bunch of lots, it's like big lots, yeah. both memorabilia, cheap autographs and stuff like that. Picked a few higher end players that I wanted to dabble in and, uh, and yeah, took it from there. And then the way that I, turn that around for the most part is I, ve I, I don't I very very rarely sell on eBay because fees are so high yeah. I'll normally just shoot I'll bake a Dropbox put all my cards in there photos mm -hmm. then send it off to friends and see what people want yeah um, and occasionally I'll do fire sales which are really fun but that's yeah. uh, that's kind of the extent of that I, I saw that yeah on Facebook marketplace I actually bought your Kyrie oh yes that, yes yes yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, it was definitely, that was one of the um, topics I wanted to cover. So I guess like different marketplaces, I guess, as we can just ease into that. So a few ones, obviously, that we're all familiar with is like eBay, Facebook marketplace, obviously through Instagram, a lot of people have been, I guess, making their mark there. And some other ones that I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit more, because I feel like people in the hobby are not quite on them yet, is StockX, and then there's now StarStock. Mm -hmm. and those two are kind of I feel like if you've obviously I'm kind of gonna like relate things to shoes a little bit because I came from sneaker reselling I basically collected cards way back in the day 20 probably so I was a Giants fan I actually am in the Bay Area so I okay. was a Giants fan they won 2010 2012 2014 so I was like a big baseball fan and at that time if you're into baseball you were pretty big into cards so we used to go to like all the card stores and everything Bought quite a few LeBron rookies back in the day because he was my favorite, obviously. So that's one thing that's absolutely paid off. I, those were purely for collecting and still like what that. What were you buying? Tops? Tops. Um, some upper deck, a lot of upper deck rookie exclusives. I think I got very one nice. top from in there. But very nice. Have yeah, you got back the in the day, those were very cheap. So, have, you gone the, have you gone the grading route? Yeah, I did. I tried to grade a few because a few, like a lot of them are off centered, but, right. and I guess like, I feel like, obviously like I'm not trying to, I guess these are kind of like my first ones. I'm not too big on to trying to sell these, at least yeah. right now, obviously I'm in, still investing in LeBron. So, but mm -hmm. yeah, definitely getting them slabbed is, has been fun. Got a few nines, but that's about the best. Um, uh, the grading stuff, man. 
Yeah, <laughs> it is tough, dude. I'm still, I guess, trying to like navigate the grading market a little bit more right now. But um, yeah, I kind of want to talk about like eBay and how I guess, like you mentioned, their fees are quite high. So I've kind of defaulted to, I guess, growing. And part of why I try to grow this Instagram was because um, like a route to sell, trade, buy, all that. But also, um, I guess, just to build a community and whatever. But I did want to say like, with StockX having like authentication as I guess like cards as obviously as a market grows bigger such as shoes right um there's going to be a lot of counterfeits there's going to be you know a lot of people trying to if there's so much money to be made there's going to be people who try to come in and I guess like steal their way to money and I feel like with StockX doing authentication that's something extremely interesting to me and selling on StockX there's no returns so buyer, I guess with eBay, you have to go through, like, say if a card goes down, buyer could try to make a, I guess, return case. So I was wondering, like, obviously, I know you sell it through Facebook and everything. Is there like any other, I guess, marketplaces? And I love, I love Starstock, um, have had amazing experiences with them. Um, and their founders are good friends of mine. So mm -hmm. I, I really like them. Uh, StockX. I love them for sneakers. Um, yeah. I've heard some faults on the sneaker end as well. Mm -hmm. I don't yet have, I don't, I don't know Josh. I don't know the StockX team personally. So mm -hmm. I can't really, and I've never bought from them. So I can't really speak on the legitimacy there, but um, eBay owns the market at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, they do right for, now. for buying, eBay is the best. Mm -hmm. So no doubt in my mind, the best place to buy cards is eBay and in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. But like, because like, auctions, auctions are the best. I mean, auctions yeah. literally determine the market. Yeah, it's, I guess like the eBay comps are kind of how we judge card prices nowadays. Which is, it's, there's no other, I guess, consistent way of finding everyday sales. Um, totally. Yeah. Um. If you don't mind, I know you run Hoop Station. I wanted um, you to drop a little basketball knowledge on us. So, um, okay. for I guess I've been pounding my audience to buy KDs for a while now. I feel like he's very underpriced. It's already gone up a lot. I was just wondering if you still think they're underpriced. I guess in your intuition as just a basketball fan, do you see his return? I guess, you know, do you think he'll come back strong? I hope so. I bought a Chrome rookie of his. <laughs> Okay. I hope so. Um, here, here's my thought on on KD. He's gonna come back. He's gonna play really well. Um, I don't know where Brooklyn particularly fits in, but the fact that like it's it's tough, right? I'm gonna give a longer answer on this because I think it's important. Steph Curry. Multiple time NBA MVP, unan first ever unanimous MVP. LeBron should have been a few years before, but a Boston reporter thought that I he shouldn't. That be. Yep. <laughs> We're going to leave that aside. Curry's the first unanimous MVP in, in history, uh, but the Warriors aren't as good anymore. Mm -hmm. So his value is going down, mm -hmm. despite the fact that his legacy is so cemented. Yeah. I'm scared that the same thing happens to Kevin Durant because mm -hmm. the Brooklyn Nets with Kyrie as stands yeah. are not a championship team mm -hmm. considering the, how injury prone both of them are. Yeah. So if I have to guess, I hope they're great. I hope the Knicks are better, but I hope they're great. And uh, I think Kevin will come back at 80 to 90%. I'm not a, a medical expert on the exact yeah. injury, but just from seeing other players come back from the same thing, mm -hmm. 80 to 90% because he's a really tough guy and he's taking it slow and very cautious, which they should have done, but I, I understand the circumstances in the finals. Um, do I think he's still a good buy though? Yes, I do. I don't think he's... I don't think he's going to come back and every $100 autograph on eBay is going to be a $400 card. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen, but I do think his $100 autographs are going to be $150 cards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think his pro rookie yeah. is going to go from a thousand or PSA 10 is like 1800, but I got BGS nine five. So like from a thousand 
to fifteen hundred. Yeah. But I feel like yeah, I've been actually buying KD from... for like the last three months. Um, I've got quite a few quite a few tops Chrome BGS nine point fives around like five hundred six hundred, which yeah. is already seen That's quite right. big returns. I feel like yeah, it's yeah. more of I guess the lead up to some like obviously we saw with the Jordan documentary like the mm-hmm. lead up to the documentary was like where his price is I the guess yeah, yeah exactly so I feel like that's kind it's, of something we could you see. make a good point it's a lot about the hype before the actual yeah. play less about the play so people yeah. feel the same way as you do mm-hmm. and that's why it's good to have a platform because you say these things yeah. and it, it has impact people can think about it exactly um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to shift a little bit into like the current state and future of the hobby, because that's something I get asked many, many times a day. Um, there's definitely v- many variables to be played out, I feel, such as overprinting of cards. And there's so many questions that'll be answered. I guess like what will happen when life gets back to normal, once like sports get back and everything. So my thoughts are that like the low barrier of entry into the hobby is something that's really driving the hobby, I feel. Because I guess in sneakers, for instance, you can't, you know, come in with $5 and or say like under $100 and really try to make a bang for your buck. In cars, you can start absolutely anywhere, right? Just by like, you know, there's definitely investments that I'd even recommend under $5. So I guess like with also sports betters was something I want to talk about. So I feel like with sports down, right? A lot of sports betters, you know, they're kind of out of their jobs. There's not much they can do, I guess, with like FanDuel, DraftKings, whatever else they do. Um, so I feel like they've kind of really flooded the card market, at least from what I've seen. A lot of DMs I get are like sports betting accounts. And um, yeah, I so I was kind of thinking like, I guess if you have any opinion on this, like when I guess sports do come back, I obviously sports bettors right now are probably seeing some insane returns on their money and cards. And it's, I guess, a lot safer of a way to throw your money rather than betting on a specific game or specific, you know, players performance in that game, you're investing like in the whole player. Um, Do you think that this will, I guess, kind of, I guess, maybe take a hit into the sports betting industry. And if you've seen anything going on with like sports betting and sports cards kind of connecting, yeah, so I, I think a couple of things. I think A, people didn't know it was a thing in the first place. Yeah. B, when the stock market went down, the way that the sports card and memorabilia market was able to stay, you know, relatively stagnant, if not improve. And obviously when the market improved, it did even better. But I feel like the combination of those two things, as well as the fact that 50% of people in the world are sports fans, right? And it's not just about basketball cards, it's not just about baseball cards. of the people in the world are sports fans. 100% of those people want to make money. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) I think because of how small the niche, even today, because today it's so early in in the sports card game, even today that that percentage must be under 1% of sports fans in the world are into sports cards. I could see that going as high as 5 to 10%. Yeah. And then you have that many people panini tops it doesn't matter they can put as much product out there there will be the demand for the supply it's not like it was in the 80s and 90s because in the 80s and 90s people weren't making money yeah. on your barry bonds rookie mm-hmm. and i feel like grading is also kind of helping with that because at some point like even if the i guess the you know if the demands there first of all i personally believe that the you know, everything will play out. As long as the demand stays hot, people continue to get into the hobby. But I guess like grading, even if I guess they op- they print too many cards or whatever, there's still going to be, you know, that percentage, you know, maybe a slight percentage increase of, you know, ones that'll grade a PSA 10, but not quite. I guess like I feel like in the 90s when stuff really, you know, came down and you couldn't, you know, people lost a lot of value in their cards you know, it wasn't grading. It was just plainly, I guess, like, you know, grading wasn't big back then. And I feel like grading is really, you know, a way to, it's kind of been been like the new normal. Nor were the numbered memorabilia autograph cards, which I think are the most exciting at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So also on that note, I guess like I've been telling my audience like over and over again to diversify their investments. 
between, I guess, established, established players and like young sort of like gambling investments. I was wondering if you have like a per- specific percentage or like what your thoughts are on, I guess, investing in more established guys like LeBron, you know, Jordan, whoever else that might be compared to guys like, I guess, Trey, Luca, who I yeah. guess, yeah. I think, I think it's a couple of things. A, first off, before even talking about that, it depends what you're in the hobby for. Mm-hmm. Are you in the hobby as a collector? Are you in the hobby as an investor? Mm-hmm. Both are fine. Both, both are good. I'm a, I have been both. Yeah. Um, if you're in it as a collector, buy whoever the hell you like. Mm-hmm. And, but make sure not to make sure that there's no chance that your money goes to zero because one day you might need yeah. that. So mm-hmm. Buy who you like, but buy the right cards and yeah. don't pick a random ass player, you know, but, and then as far as the stars, um, or as far as investing is concerned, yeah, mm-hmm. you want, you want to buy a combination of older. And I know that's not as fun to people yeah. like you and I, but you want to buy older because that's, that has the highest chance of doing well. If it's been able to do well for a decade plus, that's usually how I look at it. Um, And then you want to buy the current stars and then maybe, maybe you buy a couple Zions, (laughs) maybe, but probably not because that is not a great investment. Yeah. I have been talking about Zion a lot, I guess in terms of like his prices, you know, being, it's obviously a ton of hype. And I feel like when guys enter their second year, it's just not as much, you know, people are excited about the new rookies and everything. And besides, obviously Luca and Trey were exceptions. Like they just took a huge step in their second year. But a lot of the times I feel like if guys don't live up to exactly like the Luca or Trey in their second year, people are going to be hyped on the new rookies and guys like Zion and Ja. Obviously like they, they have a ton of potential, but one, I guess Zion is injury prone. He is like, we really don't know where Zion's career can go. And so I feel like that would probably be like the biggest gamble in my mind. I'm not really into Zion, but. My favorite example was right Andrew Wiggins. Oh, okay. And I'm not, I'm not like, they're a bus. Andrew Wiggins is yeah. not a bus by any means. He is a fantastic player. 22 points per game, puts up a decent percentage, yeah. really skilled player. When he was drafted and in his first couple of games, people, people call him LeBron. Mm-hmm. Kobe, bro. Yeah. LeBron, everybody. Like, mm-hmm. this dude is MJ reincarnated. Yeah. So his, I remember the 2014 15 Prism product came out. And this is when the hobby was a lot smaller, as you know. Yeah. And his autos were the 199, the red, the blue. They were all selling for four or 500 each, just yeah. ungraded base right out of the pack. People going crazy. You can get those for like ten dollars yeah. now. So you know, watch out. <laughs> he was the number one yeah. pick. It's very hard, I guess. Like guys in the league, I guess who turn out to be, I guess, like the Tobias Harris's and whatever. Like solid, very good players, but I guess not quite. You know what people think they're going to yeah. turn out to be. <laughs> no. Yeah, one. Well, that's a great example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> few, definitely, I feel like guys. I guess there's only so much room for, I guess, like absolute studs who will turn out to be like the Kyrie's LeBron's guys like that. Um, yeah. You know, but even then you find guys like, like Jimmy Butler. And this is why I say yeah. buy older stuff. Jimmy Butler is a superstar yeah. rookie autograph, $40. Yeah. I have been buying Jimmy speaking on that. I feel like the heat, have you seen, obviously, their matchups with the Bucks this year? They were, like, limiting Giannis to, like, I think 13 points or something. I think they knew how to guard him, I guess. I was honestly predicting an upset or at least, you know, them taking the Bucks six or seven. So, I was quite – Although, they might be on, changing the seating now. So, that Yeah, with happen. the seating now, it's going to be a little bit weird if it is just 16. Yeah, I'm, I'm not mad at it. I mean, now is the best time to do it because yeah. nobody's going to complain when basketball is back. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But, yeah, is there any other thoughts? Those were kind of like – that's kind of what I had prepared. I really appreciate you coming on. If there's anything else you want to say or touch on. No, man, I like what you're doing. Any way I can support, I'm happy to. All right, thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah. Perfect. All right, thank you. I can stop the recording now.